Well, good Thursday morning, Downsview. Welcome you again to our survey of the wisdom of God as it's contained in his book of Proverbs. As many of you have been tracking with us over the month of January, we have been taking one chapter of the book of Proverbs every day and giving some thought and devotional connection to it in terms of how can we apply this kind of wisdom in, in exceedingly practical ways through the month of January and that it would permeate the rest of this next year or so. Appreciate your steadfastness and hanging in there. And we will read a few verses today from, from Proverbs chapter 28. And I want to focus on this idea that the wisdom of God includes giving mercy to people who I think in our day and age, it's become kind of chic to overlook and to overlook for reasons that sound like they're wise and even godly, but sometimes there's more to it in terms of some of our own greed and selfishness that can even get in the way. And it's a good caution for us today, I think, from the Word of God. So let me pick up the latter portion of this chapter of Proverbs and what I'm going to do is I'll start at verse 21 and I'll read down to the end, but there's a, a verse in particular that I want us to look at. So in verse 21 of Proverbs 28, it says, To show partiality is not good, but for a piece of bread a man will do wrong. A stingy man hastens after wealth and does not know that poverty will come upon him. Whoever rebukes a man will afterward find more favor than he who flatters with his tongue. Whoever robs his father or mother and says, that is no transgression, this one is a companion to a man who destroys. A greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. Whoever trusts in his own mind is a fool but he who walks in wisdom will be delivered. Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. When the wicked rise, people hide themselves. When they perish, the righteous increase. And I want to look at this concept that's here in verse 27, and in some ways goes back to even to verse 22. Verse 27, let me just remind you, whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. I do find that these days when it comes to the news media in particular and some of the reporting about former President Donald Trump and current President Joe Biden, some of the challenges that come from the previous administration, even here in Canada, to our current Prime Minister, Justin Trudeau. Some of the political aftermath of the Liberal Party here in Ontario versus the current party of the Conservatives under uh, Premier Doug Ford. I find sometimes that I have to just turn my eyes away and stop listening for a bit because I'm getting so engrossed in just the political back and forth that's just all too predictable in some ways, right? Every first year of a new administration is spent beating up on the previous one. And, and the news media loves that kind of thing because it seems like we all, as the recipients of this news, seem to understand that, oh, yes, of course, it was all so terrible, you know, these past four years. And yet, when most of us look back at the last three or four years of a span of life, we just think, you know, it wasn't like it was horrible. <laughs> there may have been things that we disagreed with, even legitimately and objectively disagreed with, but it's not in some ways nearly as bad as people like to make it out. And, and we want to ignore it. We want to kind of push it aside and say, look, I just, I just want to close my eyes to it. And yet, people also legitimately say, wait a minute, there were real issues that had to be dealt with and are now finally being dealt with 
in a just way, in a compassionate way, in a helpful way, in a uh, way of protection and care for the weak or the wounded or the downtrodden. And something's actually changing. Don't just turn your head away because generally this is just a lot of noise, but specifically there are actually issues to be dealt with. And you know, that, that takes a heart of compassion, that takes a heart of, of seeking after righteousness to spend the time and the effort to actually sift through uh, the noise out there to get you know, to the heart of the matter. I think in some ways, verse 27 talks about what can generally and broadly we want to turn our eyes away from and yet we miss sometimes the specific opportunity to see care, compassion, justice, just love and mercy proliferated in our society. And I, and I mean by that something that convicts me personally. P people who are apparently, and I know it's apparently, but I, I think it's a good chance that it's reality, who are, quote, begging on the street for financial help. You drive up to an intersection and you see somebody with a Tim Hortons empty cup and they're walking up and down, you know, the little island that separates the traffic and they're, they're going from car to car. And overwhelmingly, the folks are, are courteous and they're not making a big deal. Some folks are more assertive or some might even be aggressive, but for the most part, they realize that I think there's a, even a bit of a strategy there. They're not going to shout down people and suddenly people are going to open their wallets. They're going to look calm and respectful and hopefully someone will give them a little something. Now, I've heard again and again people's responses in, in very horrible, awful, awful ways. You know, yelling at folks that, you know, they've done their job. Why don't they get a, get a job? Why don't they work? Look, I work hard for my money. I don't give it away. I've, I've earned this. You know, I'm not just going to hand it to you because you're too lazy. And we in the church are not immune to that. Generally, we probably don't sound exactly like that. Harsh or mean or rude or abusive. But there's a kind of disrespect that can come out that is dressed up a little bit in the language of enablement and warnings against enablement, right? We don't want to enable, that is to make able, make someone have the ability to squander this money or to not appreciate where money comes from or to spend it on things that we're certain they shouldn't be spending it on, or where they've already spent money on, and, and we don't think they should have spent it there so they don't need it here. And it troubles me because I've, I've bought that argument at times and I've acted on it. I don't have cash hardly ever, as most of us don't nowadays. We have our debit cards and we go around touching the debit um, devices in stores and restaurants and such and so I often pull up to an intersection and I think well my excuse is, is that I don't have I, I don't literally don't have any cash to give somebody who needs it and then I wonder to myself yeah you know yesterday your wife needed some money for lunch and you made sure to stop by the ATM and get some money so that you could get it to her when you dropped her off at work and, you know, there was a time at the church that you knew there was a love offering coming that day for a certain missionary group or uh, some of the musical groups that we have in our worship music groups. And I knew that I would need money for that, so I made a point to have it. I know full well there's going to be people out there who are in need. And again, I, I think legitimately they are in need. I don't think that they're playing games with us. And the text here in, in Proverbs 27 says, Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. Hiding eyes is a way to look away from the situation. 
right? It's when people are in an argument and they don't want to hear what the other person is saying. They cover their ears, right? La, 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 I can't, I can't hear you. We just ignore them. We pretend that they're not there. They're not speaking. And, and that's one of the ways to deal with people who are at the intersection, right? You're embarrassed. You're feeling awkward. You don't know what to do. You're a little nervous. Maybe you're apprehensive about the situation. And you just turn your eyes away from the need. As if not looking means the need's either been met or the need's no longer there or there's no longer desire. I mean, it's, it's, it's the kind of foolishness that I've mentioned before that you see people who are looking to cross a, the street, uh, at, not at an intersection or something, and, and they look and they see a vehicle coming and they turn their head and they walk anyway. As, as if I just turn my eyes, it's not real. It is if I turn my head the other way and no way this car could hit me because, you know, I, I've, I've looked away. I've stuck my head in the sand. It's not real. The reality is, brothers and sisters, that there's something about the extension of mercy to those who are in greater need than we are that just permeates the scripture, both for those within the church and with for those outside of the church. Just earlier in... Proverbs chapter 21 and verse 10, the soul of the wicked desires evil. His neighbor finds no mercy in his eyes. That there's this connection there between what we look at, where our eyes are looking, what we're willing to focus on, what we're willing to actually take in and recognize and apprehend and act to meet the need not because a person deserves it, but because they need it. That's what mercy is. Even over in Proverbs chapter 14, it's in verse 31. Whoever oppresses a poor man insults his maker, but he who is generous to the needy honors him. I think, wow, I, I really do want my life to honor the Lord. And the opportunity to give where there's a need, honors God. It, it, it says that there's cursings for ignoring it, and there's the opposite is blessings for those who seek to meet the need. Whoever gives to the poor will not want. Well, the very reason that we don't give to the poor is because we will want. We think, well, we're going to have less than we have, so we're going to be in want. Brothers and sisters, I think John Piper is right where he reminds us that we are never, ever going to go wrong in extending mercy, even at the risk of enablement. And often, as I say, the, the idea of enablement, what we don't want to do for someone, can, if we're not careful, carry a fair bit of our own personal arrogance behind it, can't it? I don't think that those people, there's already a category in our mind, should spend their money on those things, right? Oh, he's just going to buy booze with it. Well, how do we know? We're not, we think we know. We're so arrogant that way. And who, who are you to be sure that there isn't a need that could be helped with something that you're so sure they just don't need. Now, we put it in the category of, oh, they're going to buy booze, they're going to buy drugs. What if they're going to buy candy? What if they're going to buy junk food? What if they're going to buy clothing that's a designer brand that we don't think they should need? What if they need money, but they're already driving a nice vehicle? What if they're looking for money, but they're living in a house that's above their means? What if we think, do you understand how that works? You just start to ramp it up and ramp it up and ramp it up. I found myself the other day thinking, how do those people have those really nice cars when they're driving into what I know is a public housing or geared to income situation? I, I, I know that's who lives there. I know the building. I happen to know what, what uh, the circumstances uh, under which people are able to live there. And, and I caught myself and I thought, yeah, you think, even for a minute, Pete, that they don't deserve that. They shouldn't have it. 
But see, that's what it means. When we think someone doesn't deserve something, we think they shouldn't have that. And I turn it around and think, I have been extended such tremendous mercy from the Lord. I have all kinds of things I don't deserve and that I don't need. Things that are nicer than I need. Things that are newer than I don't, which I don't need. Things that are more expensive. More, I have more of them than I need. I have more of it stored away than I need. How, many, how much savings do I need? However it is, it's always more. However many canned goods I need in the, in the um, cupboard or pantry, well, it's based on the size of the pantry, right? Well, there's still room for some more. We better get it piled up there, you know? And there's, there's just something, brothers and sisters, that can be so anti-gospel if we're not careful in our own hearts to examine and take a risk of showing mercy to someone who really has a need. To only think to myself, God has been merciful to me to give me what I don't deserve. I'm going to be merciful and give someone else what they don't deserve. It was just a couple of weeks ago that I was going through, I think I mentioned to you, uh, Tim Hortons drive through which I don't go through drive throughs much, and the, the person in front of me had paid for my order. I think it was around Christmas time maybe, and there was sort of that giving spirit in the air. And, and he honked and I honked, and we were able to pay for the person behind us. Our daughter-in-law, Micah, had told us about this, and she said how excited she was when, when she saw that there was a whole train of people, apparently, that she was involved in. She had paid, and someone had paid for her, and she paid for someone else, and the exciting, and uh, it was a few weeks later that Pam and I experienced this, and I thought, isn't this great? Like, how cool is this? And this is not amongst the people of God. This is not in a church setting. This is not because we're Christians. It's simply extending the kind of unmerited kindness that God has extended to us, we're extending it to someone else when we see a need. Brothers and sisters, let me encourage you just in this next weekend coming upon us, where is there someone who could enjoy and would appreciate some undeserved favor from you? Who could get one of those, you've heard me talk about the $100 handshake that I received growing up in our home church from one particular gentleman again and again and again. And just, you know, just this little word of encouragement. He had money to, he had lots of money. <laughs> it was nothing for him. But for me, it was huge. And it wasn't because it was my birthday and it wasn't because it was the end of her. It was just, look, I know this would encourage you. I remember when Kev did that, gave me a little Valentine's gift one time, and he just said, this is just to encourage you. And there was just some money in there. What, what a thrill it was. Just, just to give where there is an opportunity for encouragement and to fulfill a need. Who doesn't need to be encouraged? And there are some people who have not just a need for encouragement, but they really are short on the amount of cash that they need. And God drops them right in my lap in yours, right beside me. Maybe I'm going to go to the ATM and get 40 bucks and put it in the car. I can pass out a $20 bill. Yeah, I heard you. $20? No, no, don't, don't hand someone a fiver and think we're helping them. Right? Make a difference. Make a big deal. Well, it's $20. It's not 20 It was just 15 in that example. You're already going to give 5 <laughs> we can do this. We can make a difference. And we can do it because God just causes us to reflect on how good he's been to us. Here's an opportunity to be good to another person. A stingy man, verse 22 says, hastens after wealth and does not know that poverty will come upon him. A greedy man stirs up strife, but the one who trusts in the Lord will be enriched. Whoever gives to the poor will not want, but he who hides his eyes will get many a curse. The promise of God is that there is joy on the other side of giving mercy and extending mercy to someone else. And there is honor to the one who's extended it to us and enables us to show mercy to others. Let, let's look for opportunities in these coming days to do just that, friends. Cheers.